good wellness coaches won't treat you that way. They won't give you one strategy or give their audience one strategy and say, this is going to fix everyone's problems because it's not. We're all different. We have our authentic different lives and we have different needs and good teachers don't do that to our kids, right? Hey Impact Maker, I'm Helena, the creator of the Present Teacher Podcast, and in each episode, I'm going to help you live the life you are made for through self-care, social-emotional learning, and classroom management. You know that impact you are after when you first started teaching? Well, we're going to make it happen here. Hello and welcome to episode one of the Present Teacher Podcast. I am your host, Helena, and I am so glad that you are here. And today, I thought we would start off talking about the new year. Today is the 31st of December, and as we start the new year, there's a lot going on about setting resolutions and goals. And specifically right now, talking teachers are talking about prioritizing themselves. But with that being said, as I'm scrolling around Instagram, I'm also noticing that there's some bad advice going around. So with that being said, I wanted to talk about some of the self-care myths going on around in the world. So I thought I would talk about the top five self-care myths going around today. Starting with self-care myth number one, which is self-care is selfish. In other words, it means that you don't care about your students if you are taking care of yourself. Now, I have to be honest here. If you would have asked first year me if I thought self-care was selfish, I would have said yes. You see, I knew back then that it was important to take care of myself and I needed to. But I felt guilty. I thought it would take time away from my students. I would say that time spent on me is time wasted and I could be spending that on others. I know. Silly, right? Me, the wellness coach? Anyways, that couldn't be further from the truth. You see, self-care allows you to show up energized. When you take care of yourself, you are able to show up in your most optimal self in your most authentic way, and that means that you can impact others in a very renowned way. You see, when you take care of yourself, you're setting up this structure, this routine of being able to refill your cup throughout the day. That way, in these little pockets or these little bursts, you're going to feel renewed and refreshed. And by taking care of yourself, you're taking care of others too. When you take better care of yourself you will find that you are able to make a greater impact on your students in ways that you can never imagine. So myth number one, self-care is selfish, is completely false. With that being said, let's go on to myth number two, which is self-care is just treating yourself. Now, to be honest, I used to get this confused a lot, but there is a difference between self-indulgence and self-care. So let's talk about it. The definition of self-indulgence is doing something out of pleasure once. So in those times when I thought self-care was completely selfish, I thought taking care of myself meant treating myself to that three-month-old candy I found at the back of my desk. I know. Anyways, treating yourself is not the same, especially if it's just once. Treating yourself to chocolate or maybe a massage once a year. Now, don't get me wrong. We all love a good massage. But it's not the same. Self-care, on the other hand, means consistent healthy habits you implement to preserve or improve your health. Notice I said consistent. It is something you do on a daily basis, if not weekly. So, for example, reaching 10,000 steps every day or drinking enough water. You see, self-care is not about treating yourself every once in a while. That's why this is a complete myth. Self-care is intentional, consistent habits you incorporate into your day in order to refill your cup or energy. It's not something you just treat yourself every once in a while to. 
So that leaves us with myth number two, self-care is just treating yourself. With that being said, let's go to myth number three, which is self-care is hard to incorporate or be consistent with. So I can remember first year me trying to take care of myself. I tried by walking my dog every day, but here is the problem. There were some days or some weeks where I was really, really good at it, and then some weeks where I just could not build the motivation or the momentum. I just wasn't being consistent. So then at the time, I was going to counseling, and I talked to my counselor how I was trying to walk on a daily basis with my dog, and her response was simple. It was, how are you being consistent? And silly me answered by walking my dog. She responded, no, I mean, how are you being consistent? How are you making sure that you're doing this every day? And that's when I realized I had no strategy. You need a strategy to be consistent. You can't just throw spaghetti on a wall and hope it sticks or throw a dart at a bullseye blindfolded. You need a strategy in order to stay consistent. So that's why myth number three is it's hard to be consistent. Now, don't get me wrong. It can be hard to be consistent if you don't have a strategy. But with the strategy, it's possible. Which moves me on to myth number four, which is it takes too much time to take care of yourself. Now, don't get me wrong. It can be frustrating to feel like you never have time. So I want to help break through this myth by doing a little exercise with you. So I know you're listening to a podcast. If you're driving, go ahead and skip this and remember to do this later or just do it mentally. Otherwise, I want you to grab a pen, pencil, and paper, and I want you to do this exercise. Okay, you ready? All right. So this will work for you too. After you get a paper out, I want you to write down Everything you do in a day, from the moment you wake up to the moment you go to bed. Everything. So, for example, I could put 6 a.m., woke up, 6.05, coffee, 6.10, or 6.10, more coffee. Just kidding. Anyways, write down everything you do from the moment you wake up to the moment you fall asleep. After that, I want you to write the times next to it if you haven't. Okay, ready for the next part? Go ahead and pause me if you need. Anyways, after you do this exercise, I want you to look, take a step back and look at your time. What little pockets of time is there in your little schedule you just wrote up? Do you find little moments of like five minutes, 10 minutes here and there where you're not really doing anything? Or are there moments where you can kind of shift things around and make more time for yourself? Because the reality is you do have the time or you can make more time. The problem is just finding it and making it. Self-care doesn't have to be all day. It doesn't have to take a ton of time. The next step is to make self-care habits that are built into your day, into your routine. You see, when you create habits, the beauty is that you don't have to think about them. It's not something extra you add to your do list. It's something you do. It's on autopilot, like brushing your teeth or doing your hair. So with that being said, make a goal of what you want to accomplish during that time and create systems to support that so you don't have to think about it. You see, self-care doesn't have to take hours a day. In fact, it can just take five minutes. In fact, I have a free guide of 40 self-care ideas that take five minutes or less that you can put into that time. So if you are looking for that, just go ahead and go to, I'll link it to the show notes. Which leads us to our last and final myth, which is one I am very passionate about, and that is, it's a one size fits all. So if you know me, then you know that I am a huge advocate about being your authentic self and creating a space and a life where you can do that. And especially in social media right now, there's a lot of talk about these new trends and these new cookie cutter strategies that you can use for your self-care. And I'm going to be a little confrontational right now and just say that good wellness coaches won't treat you that way. 
They won't give you one strategy or give their audience one strategy and say, this is going to fix everyone's problems because it's not. We're all different. We have our authentic different lives and we have different needs and good teachers don't do that to our kids, right? We don't have them learn with the same strategies. We tailor it to them and their individual needs. And that's what we should be doing with our self-care. We should create a plan that needs to be authentically created for you. That works with your life and your goals. Because your life and your goals doesn't look like anyone else's. It doesn't look like your friend's and it doesn't look like mine. And that's okay. That's what makes us beautiful. So with that being said, I'm really passionate about this. Myth number five is self-care is one size fits all. It's doesn't have to be and it shouldn't be it should be tailored to you and your needs so there you go there are the five myths about self-care with that being said this week and this week only i wanted to let you know that if you want to work with others on your self-care in 2022 if you want to say yes i want to take the plunge i want to work on myself and i want support in doing it then this is an invite the doors are open for this week only inside teacher care academy so teacher care academy is a membership of like-minded educators that support you in going after your goals by creating a self-care plan that's tailored and authentic to you and the goal of the plan is that it takes five minutes or less every day and the goal is to imagine your life one year from today and to wake up one year from today living the life you want to live and that's what teacher academy is all about so if you are interested feel free to go to the link in the show notes i'm so excited to see you inside there's an amazing group of educators already in and the doors will be closing this friday so get in while you can and if you're listening past this then i'm sorry the doors have already closed but with that being said remember that we are stronger together i am so grateful that you are here thank you for listening i will see you later this month when we get to talk about social emotional learning take care Thank you so much for listening. If you liked this episode, I would love it if you took a screenshot and tagged me on Instagram at the present teacher. Also, make sure to subscribe to get notified each time a new episode comes out. And if you have a minute, leave a review to let me know what you thought. I love hearing from you. Keep dreaming and remember, we are stronger together.